A little over two weeks ago, Apple surprised us all and announced that they will release Final Cut Pro and Logic Pro for the iPad. It just became available this week and I'm so excited to try it out. I downloaded it immediately as it became available and I've been playing around with it for a little bit, but today I want to really put it to the test and try to edit a whole YouTube video on it. I also want to compare the export speed to the Mac and also see what kind of limitations I run into. So let's waste no more time, take my iPad and get right into it. Alright, so the video I'm gonna be editing today is a studio display review, which by the time you're watching this will already be out on the channel. I have all the footage on this Samsung SSD drive and I'm gonna try to import all of that to the iPad. It's a M1 iPad Pro 12.9 inch with 256 gigabytes of storage. So I have the eight gigabytes of unified memory only. We'll see how well it works, but I think it's gonna be fine. All right, so let's get started. Just gonna plug in my SSD drive and start a new project right here. I'm just gonna call this Studio Display Review. And then we have four options to kind of import files. I'm just gonna choose import from files. And I have all my files right here. I also have a folder with music and also the audios that I recorded separately. All right, so I have now imported everything. I'm ready to get started. I could not import the music inside of a folder as I can on the Mac. It lets you organize your stuff better. This does not work here, but it's fine. I imported it separately and it's now in there with all of the other files. So I'm just gonna get started editing and let you know once I run into limitations or maybe discover things that work better on the iPad. Alright, so I've already discovered something. If I want to sync audio and video, which I do because I record my audio separately, this is also really easy to do. You can just start a new multicam and then select both of the audio and video. And then you can just select which audio you want to use because in this case, I only want to use the separately recorded audio. I can just select this right here and now I have it synced. It's really easy and very nice that they also brought this over from the Mac. It was not as easy to do in LumaFusion when I last used that. Alright, so, so far I really like the experience. It works very well for just editing the talking head and just editing out mistakes. And it's kind of the same as the Mac version. Of course, I don't have my custom keyboard commands, so that's something that's still missing, but I got used to the ones that are in here and they do all that I can do on the Mac. So it works really well so far, but now just to really get the iPad experience, I want to switch to just using the iPad by itself without connecting the keyboard and see how well that works. So about the touch editing experience, I have to say that it works better than I expected and it's really efficient and also fun to use. I just noticed that it's still much slower than I can do it with the keyboard. So it seems like it's still holding me back a little bit, but it's much faster than I anticipated. And it basically has all of the keyboard shortcuts that I usually use, which is the faster playback, the splitting, and also the trim, end, and start as separate buttons. So that's why it's so fast for me. Also, it makes it really easy to kind of make space if you don't need the inspector or if you don't need your gallery because you're just editing the mistakes out. It makes it really easy to hide those and that makes for more space and for a nicer editing experience. I just think that it's still faster with the keyboard because you can just be more precise. I tried the jog wheel, it's not really for me, but I think still, if you don't have a keyboard, it's very much usable and that's very nice. Of course, ergonomically, it's not really that comfortable to do sitting at a table, so I'm just gonna switch back to the keyboard, but I have to say it's very much doable and better than I thought. One thing I've noticed is that there's a bug, I don't know what it is, but the audio waveforms sometimes get messed up and then only when I split the clips again, then it goes back to normal, so that's kind of weird. Also, just speaking of the general performance, some things are a little bit smoother than on the Mac. So on the Mac, when you zoom in and out while you're playing back, the audio waveforms usually are not shown or just like loading. While on the iPad, that usually works. But as I said, with the problem of them showing up over each other, I don't know which one is better. Also, it didn't really seem to move really smoothly like the playhead. I don't know if it's because I only have eight gigabytes of memory in here or whatever, I don't know. <laughs> 
I just noticed that it feels less smooth than on the Mac. And also the playhead sometimes does things that I do not expect. So yeah, I don't know. It's hard to explain, but sometimes it behaves in a different way. Yeah, that's maybe just because I'm used to the Mac version, but still. I think you could get used to it if you start out on the iPad, but if you switch from the Mac, you will definitely notice that. Something else I've noticed is that to split clips, you have to always select them first. It's not a major thing, but on the Mac, you don't have to do that, and it makes the workflow go a little bit faster. All right, so let's get back to the keyboard, because I really don't like to sit hunched over like that and finish the edit. <laughs> So I just got done finishing the A roll and I'm just now gonna try to add some B roll, add some effects, add some titles and just take you along and tell you if I notice anything different there. For the A roll it worked very well, it works pretty much the same as a Mac actually, just some inefficiencies due to like the selecting of the clips before you can split it and stuff like that. But I think if I were using it more often then it would really feel just as quick as on the Mac so that's a plus for now. And let's see how well it does for the B-roll and tiles and effects. Something cool that they've added in the iPad version is new titles, so I'm just gonna try to use them. You can find them right here under titles and there are some new ones here. I'm just gonna try to use one of them, which is the skylight bumper one. Right here we have the conclusion. Just gonna have to figure out how to actually use it. But yeah, I'm just gonna try to make that work and incorporate the new features into my video so I can show you in the end how it turned out. Alright, so I've tried to use the titles, but actually it didn't really let me customize them as much as I wished, so... I'm not gonna use them for now, maybe it's not an iPad problem, but it's the same on the Mac because they also added the new titles there. I haven't tried that out, so I can't really speak on that. But for now, they don't really work for me, I don't really think they look good, and you can't really change the backgrounds as much as I was hoping. So yeah, I'm just gonna uh, leave them out. I'm just gonna add some B-roll now and see how well that works. <laughs> Okay, so something I've just noticed is that for some of my b-roll I like to do speed ramps so I just do a pan and then add speed ramps to it to make it more interesting. It works on the iPad but in a different way than on the Mac so on the Mac you can kind of blend the speed which makes it look smoother. I'm gonna play you two clips side by side right now to show you the difference. So the one edited on the Mac will look smoother. On the iPad you have to split the clips separately and then change the speed for each one so it will be a more abrupt change from one to the next. And that's kind of sad that it is missing, but yeah, it's just maybe some features had to go or maybe they're gonna be added in later. But that's something I've really noticed and I'm gonna have to add those effects later on the Mac because I don't like how it looks on the iPad. All right, so I'm done with the edit for as much as I can do on the iPad, so I still have to add the speed ramps on the Mac later, but I'm done for now. And now let's try out the new music features. So they have added music tracks that actually conform to the length of your project. So you can just choose whatever track you want and it will kind of, with AI I think, or maybe it's just that they wanted to use that buzzword as well, but you can basically just make it the length you want it and it will make it end exactly where your video ends. So that way you don't have to mess around with trying to split music exactly at the right time to make it longer and stuff like that. So that's really cool and I just want to find one track that I like or maybe two or three and then use them for this project. The new music is right here under soundtracks and then we have to download those first so let's do that. I'm just gonna look through them, find some that I like and then I will show you how it works. that I like for the intro and I will just try to add that and then you can see how it really like changes the song when I change the length. I want it to end after the intro. If I do that then you can hear it will actually stop right there.
that's really cool. So I'm gonna find another one and use the music throughout this, but this is a really cool feature because it saves a lot of time. I just hope that they add more songs because for now there are like maybe five or six that I liked. It's not a lot of choice. It will get really boring really quickly. I hope they either expand the selection or even make this available for all songs, which would be really cool, but I think that would be much harder. So I don't know if it's really possible. Still, I really like this feature and it's a really cool thing. I don't know if it's actually in the Mac version, so, so maybe this is still an iPad exclusive. All right, so I'm done with the edit. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I still have to finish up some things on the Mac, as I said, but for now, I will just do a speed test against the Mac before I do the Mac only things. So we can compare the exporting performance of an iPad versus the Mac directly, because I'm really curious about that. So let's get going. To make this as fair as possible, we will compare it to a base model MacBook Air M2 with 8GB of memory. Compared to the M1 and the iPad, this does have the media engine, which should make it a little faster, but I don't have an M1 Mac available for this test, unfortunately, so this is the closest comparison I can make. I exported both in the highest settings possible. The iPad was faster, surprisingly, finishing after just 5 minutes and 55 seconds, even though it has the slower chip. The MacBook took 9 minutes and 14 seconds, so it took more than 50% longer than the iPad to export. Alright, so that was quite interesting. I did not expect the iPad to do that well. Of course, it has like a newer code base and it's probably more efficient, but still I didn't expect it to have like such a huge difference in performance. But let's try to bring it all together now and come to a conclusion about Final Cut on the iPad Pro. All right, so overall, I think it's really great, but it still needs some work, obviously. I think it's great for especially social media work. So if you're just starting out to learn how to edit and stuff like that, I think you can really do a lot here with much less intimidating stuff compared to like uh, Final Cut Pro on the Mac, for example. If you open Final Cut Pro for the first time on the Mac, it's much harder, I think, to kind of figure out what to do. Whereas on the iPad, especially with the touch operation it's really nice to use especially for beginners in my experience i really like that it worked for like the basic edits especially when i edited the a roll essentially the same way as the mac so it worked just as well just as quickly and just as nicely as it does on the mac even though my mac has much more ram and power than the ipad of course there were some annoyances like having to select the clips before you can actually split them but i think that can all be ironed out in future updates then i also like the new music it's a really cool feature and i hope they bring it to the mac as well we just need a bigger library of music to actually be able to continuously utilize this the new effects are also really cool i didn't really feel like i could make them look like i wanted to and they were pretty set in like their design so yeah i didn't really like that but they are certainly a nice way to really quickly add something that looks good so i think it's still a positive the pencil effect is also really cool. I did not use it in this video because I just didn't really feel like it fits that style. But it's just a really cool feature and it's another tool you can use. You can just draw on the screen. I think you've probably seen it in other videos and it will just animate it automatically and that looks really cool. So yeah, it's just another way to easily make your videos look cooler. And last but not least, I really liked how it just gets out of the way. It makes it much easier to have a kind of clean workspace, which I think was also necessary for the iPad just because you can really have as much screen space. Final Cut Pro on the iPad doesn't really work well with external screens yet so it's really necessary to always have a clean workspace and they make that really easy and I like that. All of the menus are available but they can be hidden away very quickly and also be pulled up again very quickly so you can focus more on what you're actually doing and I really like that. You can do the same on the Mac but I think the iPad is just more intuitive in that way and they make it easier and faster. All in all, I really like that they have taken a new approach and not just ported the Mac version over. I know some people always want Mac OS on the iPad, but I think the iPad should do things a different way because if not, I could just get a MacBook. <laughs> and so I really like that they have taken an entirely new approach and really put in the effort to make this not Final Cut Pro on the iPad, but also Final Cut Pro 
for the iPad, which is really important because I think it's nice to just try to think of new ways of doing things we've been doing for a while. And the Mac is kind of set in his ways and the iPad is an opportunity to find new ways like the touch interface, the jog wheel. Of course, it's all pretty much still a 1.0, but I like that they have taken the time to really figure out an iPad first approach for this app. Okay, but there are also some things I've ran into, some things I dislike. First, of course, I really dislike not being able to edit from an SSD, especially on iPads where I usually don't buy that much storage. Really a dumb limitation and I hope they remove that because the iPad has the same Thunderbolt port as the MacBook, so they should be able to do the same thing. Next up, I also really dislike that I cannot do speed ramps in the same way that I can do them on the Mac. I showed that in the editing part. Of course, it's very specific to me, but I think other people like that effect as well because it's very popular on social media nowadays. And so I think they should add that feature. Next up, I heard that some people don't like the way you can adjust color in the iPad version. I'm not someone that color grades a lot yet, so I can't really talk about that and you should maybe watch some more advanced filmmaker talk about that. It's just something that's missing from the iPad version because you don't have all the tools available. And lastly, I really dislike that I cannot take a Mac Final Cut Pro project and put it back onto the iPad. The transfer only works one way and as soon as you go onto the Mac, you cannot go back. And that really makes it feel like it's only a Final Cut Lite or Final Cut Junior version maybe. And yeah, it's just not necessary. I think it should be able to go both ways because then I can really start and edit on the Mac, take my iPad on the go and the other way around and don't have to think about it. I know that there are still features missing and so that would maybe be weird, but I really hope they add that in the future. Okay, I just have to add one more point. I felt like doing more complicated things is not really nice on the iPad. So for example, when I tried to adjust the title, it felt really awkward and not very nice. And on the Mac, those kinds of things feel much better, I think. So yeah, I don't really know how to fix that because like the iPad is kind of built on simplicity and sometimes doing more complicated stuff does not really go well with simplicity, but still, I think it's just something they could improve on. But overall, I have to say, I'm really happy that this even exists. We have been waiting for this for so long and I think it's much better than I thought. Most of the things that you would do on a Mac in Final Cut, you can still do here, especially for like simple YouTube edits and stuff like that. So I'm just really happy that it exists and that they have really made an effort to think of an approach that suits the iPad well and makes it intuitive to use on a touch first interface. Of course, this is still a 1.0 and there's lots of stuff to improve. But if I think about my list of improvements, it's like, really minor stuff actually. I, I thought this would be much worse, especially when I was editing like the basic part of the video, just the talking head that went so well and I was really surprised actually. So yeah, I'm positively surprised. I think it's much better than I thought and much more different than I thought at the same time. So yeah, it's a really great direction for the iPad. I hope that they go into this direction further, maybe add some other pro apps like Xcode. I know a lot of people are waiting for that, but we'll have to see on WWDC. Personally, I will stick to the Mac for now because it's still a little bit quicker for me and some of the things I talked about I'm still missing. So it's not for me right now. Also because of the file system, it's not really as nice as on the Mac and like the not being able to edit from external SSDs is also a big factor for me. But still, Still, I think it's really exciting that this exists finally and I'm so excited for WWDC now because like if they have left out this big news then what else is there? So yeah, I'm looking forward to finding out. If you're someone that has an M1 or M2 iPad, I really encourage you to try this Final Cut version out right now. You can get a one month free trial. so. It's like no strings attached. And especially if you're not into video editing yet, but maybe want to shoot like a cool travel video or something like that, I think this goes much further than iMovie so far. And you can have a lot of fun with just your iPad. And especially for beginners like that, this is really cool and a really nice tool. All right, so that's been it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this style of video, kind of exploring the new Final Cut for iPad together with me. If you liked the video, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.